All right, great question here. Uh, somebody saw a social media guru, um, Gary Vaynerchuk. Actually, I, I do respect him as well. Gary V, he's commonly known as. And Gary V has been, apparently, I haven't seen this one, but I can't, I can imagine he does. He's been encouraging his audience to use chat GPT to make social media posts. And, you know, I, I assume it's because, well, it's, it's faster, you know, it's, you don't have to do so much work and then therefore you can pump out a lot more content. And it's not what I've been encouraging people to do because it's not, it's the problem I have with that is not that at the time of this recording, ChatGPT is not connected to the internet. It, it, the it, the ChatGPT, ChatGPT's knowledge ends at about the middle of 2021. Yeah, they, they had the training data only up until 2021. By the time some of you watch this, it's already connected to the internet because that's coming. The, the internet connected ChatGPT is, is coming in the next few months. But right now, even if it's, okay, even if it is, let's assume that you now have a version of ChatGPT or other AI smart good writer that's connected to the internet is it a good idea to use it to create social media posts so here's my take on that because so many other people are doing it there's going to be an ai generic voice out there it's going to be i mean you already see it i mean in fact i i see this a lot i see i see uh someone's post and then i see a comment below that says was that chat gpt written because you can kind of tell, I mean, the more you use ChatGPT, the more you get what the voice is. It's a particular, can someone describe it below? What's the voice? How would you call it? Um, it's just professional. Uh, and it, use, it uses certain words a lot. Like, I, I don't know. It's, I, find it, I find it quite interesting. It actually has a particular vocabulary it uses often. So you're going to see a lot of that on the internet. It's going to become boring. I mean, yes, sure. Certain articles are going to be something that's interesting for the reader. And even if it's generic voice, it's fine, you know, but you know how you read some journalists and some authors, like let's say journalists, right? Because news is a commodity, right? News. You want to see the reporting about some world event. Well, which news, which, which journalist you want to read it from? Because if it's just a generic journalist, you're like, oh, I got the information. But when there's a particular journalist that has a voice, like the when I say voice, I also mean their way of framing the situation. You enjoy reading that journalist more. It's just you trust that journalist, right? Because they share your values, yes. But they also have a have a unique take on it that you just enjoy. And maybe their their voicing and their phrasing is different from other generic journalists. Same thing with ChatGPT. So in fact, you know what's what's interesting? It's going to be, ironically, even easier to stand out in the future because why? This is scary, but it's true. People will become lazier. I already feel that within myself, to be honest with you. I'm like, well, I, when my clients ask me a question, I'm like, did you ask ChatGPT yet? Because they could probably give you a better answer, right? But their answer will be very bland sounding, not the George Cow, you know, mistakes and the awkwardness and the uh, contrarianism or whatever, whatever you see me and the spirituality and the whatever, whatever. It's it's different from GPT. So um, I think that this is high time for you to lean more into your quirkiness, lean more into your weirdness or your mistakes and your vulnerability and everything like lean more into your personality be like okay when you <laughs> when nobody else is when you're journaling by yourself that's an interesting voice right when you journal by no one else is reading your journal notice what is the what is that voice lean into that and ironically, you could probably do that with ChatGPT. You could you could journal on ChatGPT and say, can you describe what this voice is? I'm trying to figure out how do I describe this voice? What, what is this style? Or another way of doing this, when you're writing to, to you know, a, 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 a close friend or a family member, maybe even text messages or whatever, or email, like, what's that voice? You know, 
or when you are, and but in terms of video, let's say, when you're talking in an animated way to, to a close friend who you totally trust, they're not going to judge you. They're not going to judge how you look, everything. They love you just as you are. They've known you. They, they, they like, that's why they're your friend. They like who you are. They just like everything. When you're talking in an animated way or in a very deep way with them, what is that way? Start noticing that and lean more into that for your writings and for your videos, because that is going to be better than ChatGPT in the style and in the voicing. Yeah, maybe your ideas won't be as smart or reasonable as ChatGPT, but more and more, that's not going to matter. I mean, not, not that it won't matter. Truth always matters, but more and more people will be bored by generic truth. <laughs> Okay, they will say truth. I can easily find. I will GPT it. They won't be googling it or binging it. They'll be GPT it or chat it. I'm gonna AI it. Find the truth to filter out. You know what is what are the facts? That's easy. But I want to get a human's unique and engaging take on it. So, that bottom line, I understand why Gary V might be saying this. Because he has a lot of aspiring creators, millions actually, of aspiring creators in his audience. And he has been preaching for the longest time, quantity of content. You got to put out, and he was like, I put out 30 pieces of content a day. I mean, it's something ridiculous like that. Because he has so many different platforms that he, and he has a team, right? But even when he was doing it himself, he did like you know, three pieces of content a day or something crazy or five pieces of content. I mean, he was very prolific. And that's partly why he's so famous. But... Now, AI is going to be so much more prolific than any of us. So we need to, it's, so it's not about being prolific anymore because it's impossible. It's impossible. What are you going to compete with? There's no way. But it's just like when you look for that one journalist or author or video maker, like, oh, their video is out for the week or, oh, their article's out this week. You lean in. doesn't matter how many other emails you have in your inbox. Oh, so-and-so wrote about that. I want to read that. Right. Like or even once a month, there are certain authors. I'm like, when are they going to come out? And then I'll go, oh, three times a year they come out with something. I'm, I'm reading it for sure. Like there's there's no there's no question. I prioritize that over the you know 30 emails I just got in the last you know half an hour. So prolific is not going to be is not going to be a strength anymore. It's going to be human quality is what is going to be really unique and interesting. So. I would say ChatGPT, you can when you if you use it for social media, it's not to churn out blo more blog posts because that's you you're, you can't compete because AI is going to be doing it faster than you. <laughs> you having to type something and then paste it and copy that's <laughs> no, that's not that's a losing game. What you can use ChatGPT for is to overcome blocks to say I want to talk about this, I want to write about this and. I just need some ideas to get started. As a human, you are not so good at ideation compared to, to robots, but you're good at evaluation. You're good at feeling, sensing into, did I like that idea or not? Something, no, I don't really like that idea. But it's give me 10 ideas and I'll tell you which ones I like and don't like and why, right? When you have zero ideas, ChatGPT will save you an hour or two of like, well, ChatGPT is going to be 10. And ten, those 10 ideas might be very generic. And then you can go, ah, I see what the mainstream generic thoughts are. And I can be a contrarian to that, or I can make it more deeper. I can make it more nuanced. I can make it more human. So ChatGPT is, to me, it's like a foil, F-O-I-L, uh, meaning, meaning it's something for me to bounce off of, right? Like if I have... Like to be able to jump higher, I need to be able to bounce from something, right? If I'm, if I'm in the water, I can't jump, right? But if I'm a hard surface, I can jump higher. ChatGPT for me is kind of like that hard surface. It allows me to go, what's the mainstream thought? Good, I'm going to take off from there. So I hope this is helpful. It's for ideation. And then if you are, if you are like questioning your, your logic, it's a reasoning engine to say, okay, I've just written this article. What are two or three major holes or reasoning gaps you see in this article because I, I want to be credible. Yes, I'm human and I make mistakes, but I still don't want to miss the major red flag. 
ChatGPT helps you with that red flag. Like, why didn't you see? You know, ChatGPT is like, well, obviously you should address this and this. And you could decide whether or not to, because you could say, well, that's for another article, you know, or, um, or yeah, that's a good idea. Let me write a little bit about that, right? So I hope this is helpful. Yeah, and I'll just have to say one more thing. ChatGPT is way more concise than me. <laughs> it's trying to save its tokens. It's trying to save its computing resources it's called tokens. So ironically, uh, with human rambling, that's actually going to be more entertaining in the future than GPT concise truth. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to say that. Yeah.